How is it going everybody Mr Android here well if you have just bought yourself a brand new Redmi Note 11 Pro or Note 11 Pro Plus then this video is going to be super useful for you today i will be showing you 25 plus tips tricks and hidden features that will definitely make your experience a lot better guys i'm using the Note 11 Pro Plus in this video but all these tips and tricks will also work in Note 11 Pro as well for that being said make sure you guys watch this video till the very end also let's aim for 1500 likes on this one so drop a like, leave a comment and let's get started. This device comes with a side mounted fingerprint and by default you need to press the power button to unlock the phone using your fingerprint. If you go to settings, password and security and then select fingerprint, here you will find an option called fingerprint method. It will be set to press, simply change it to touch. Now whenever you want to unlock your phone, you just need to touch the power button instead of pressing it all the time. Similarly, let me show you how you can assign more actions to this power button. Just go inside additional settings and then select gesture shortcuts. Here you can assign different shortcuts for double pressing the power button. You can take a screenshot, turn on the torch light, put your phone in silent mode or even you can open the quick settings. I always use this shortcut to activate silent mode. So whenever I want to put my phone in silent mode, I just need to double tap on the power button. Note 11 Pro and Pro Plus comes with 120Hz AMOLED display and I think it's one of the best display that you can get for this price. But once you set up your device, it will be set to 60Hz by default. To change it, go to Settings, Display, select Refresh Rate and change it to 120Hz. Now your phone will feel much better and smooth. Even though this device comes with 120Hz refresh rate, I still feel animations are quite slow. If you really want to reduce the animation speed and make your phone even faster, all you have to do is go to about phone and tap on this MIUI version for 7 times. Once done, go to additional settings and here you will find the developer options. Go inside and drag it down till you find animation scale. Now change all the 3 to 0.5x. Once you are done, now your phone will feel much faster and snappier. Next, let's talk about the always on display and lock screen. If I go inside this option, you see the always on display is turned off. Just turn it on and here you get a lot of different customization options. You can add image from the gallery and set it as your always on display. You can also choose from a variety of different clock styles and presets. There are so many different backgrounds to choose from and it even lets you customize and change the color and style as well. I think the always on display is feature packed in MIUI 13 and I will highly suggest you to activate this feature. Apart from this, if you want to customize the lock screen, you need to select lock screen clock format and here you get the option to change the clock style for your lock screen. You can select whatever you like. Whenever I receive any notifications, I have this edge lighting blinking around the screen so that I don't miss any notifications. To enable this feature on your phone, again go inside always on display and select notification effect. Here you can choose different lighting effects and customize the way how you receive notifications on your phone. Guys, before I move on, if you love watching these kind of videos, then please do support this channel. We are very close to 200k subscribers. So if you haven't already, then hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon. It would mean a lot to me. MIUI 13 has some beautiful wallpapers and if you really want to get those amazing wallpapers, simply press and hold on your home screen, tap on this icon that is on the bottom left. Click on profile and then select wallpapers. Here you get all the latest wallpapers that comes with MIUI 13. If you want to apply any of these wallpapers, Simply tap on it and then select apply. You can set it both on your home screen as well as the lock screen. Whenever I swipe down, I get this brand new control center and if I swipe right from the bottom, I can see all my notifications. If you are not comfortable with this style and want to go back to the older version, then just go to settings and select notifications and control center. Now select control center style and change it to older version. This way you can easily access all your notifications in a single swipe. You see at the bottom, I have one extra button and if I tap on it, I get some additional functions such as I can take a screenshot, access my recent applications, power off my phone, activate Google Assistant and more. To enable this extra button in the navigation bar, just go to additional settings and then to accessibility. Here you need to enable this option called accessibility menu shortcut. Once done, you will have one additional button that gives access to a lot of useful functions. Apart from this, did you know by double tapping the back button, you can quickly switch between your recently used applications. Now if you don't like navigation buttons and if you want to completely remove them, 
then search system navigation and change it to gestures. Now you can use these beautiful gestures to navigate your phone. Next, let's talk about the app drawer. If I press and hold on my home screen, select settings, click on more and then go inside home screen. Here I can customize the background of my app drawer. I can easily change it to light or dark color and even it lets me control the opacity as well. Not only this, you can also manage the app categories and if you want, you can add more categories in the app drawer. When I open my recent apps menu, it has this grid view which I am sure not many of you prefer. If you want to change it, go to home screen settings, select more and then click on arrange items in recent. By default, it is set to vertically, you can change it to horizontal view. Now you will get more clear view in the task manager. Since we are in the recent apps, if you want to open any app in a pop-up view, just press and hold on the application and then select the third icon from the list. You can even resize the app window and it definitely improves the multitasking. If you want to check what are the applications that support this feature, simply open the recent apps menu and click on the floating window tab. Here you can see all the applications that you can use in a pop-up window. Another useful feature that I found in the recent apps menu is when I go to home screen settings, more and then select blur app preview. Here you can choose the applications for which preview will be blurred in the recent apps. For example, let's say if I select YouTube, now even if the YouTube application is running in the background, but still no one will be able to see the preview of that app in the recent apps menu. Next, if I go to additional settings and then select memory extension, here I can enable or disable this feature. It basically adds 3GB of virtual RAM by occupying the internal storage of your phone. You can use this feature if there is enough storage available on your phone. It definitely improves the overall performance, but if you don't have enough space, then I will suggest you to go ahead and disable this feature. Next, if I go inside battery and click on this gear icon at the top, we get an option called turn off mobile data when device is logged. If you don't want applications to consume your data in the background even when your device is logged, you can enable this setting. This basically turns off your mobile data when you have logged your phone. Now let's talk about one of my favorite feature. If I go to settings and then select special features, I get this option called sidebar. Basically it activates a very useful toolbox during video playback. All you have to do is just select manage video apps and you can select all the applications you want to enable. Once you are done, now if you open any video playing app such as YouTube, simply swipe from the left and you get this toolbox which has some very useful features. You can do screen recording, take a screenshot, access all your applications but my favorite feature is this play video sound. It lets you play any audio with the screen turned off. You can use this feature if you are just listening to songs on YouTube. Guys, you are getting one of the YouTube premium feature for absolutely free. Apart from this, it also has audio enhancer which will enhance and improve the sound clarity as well. Definitely check it out. If you search game turbo from the settings, here you can add all your games and if you play any game directly from here, what it does is it gives you options such as you can optimize the performance, restrict other system settings while playing games, activate the FPS counter and do lot more. It definitely enhances the overall experience. So I will recommend you to start playing games from Game Turbo. Note 11 Pro and Pro Plus comes with an inbuilt app locker. And if you want to lock some of your applications, you can go to Settings, Apps and then select App Lock. Now you can select all the apps that you want to lock on your phone. It works really well and you don't have to install any third-party applications just to lock your apps. Next, let me show you how you can customize and add more features to your status bar. Go to Settings, Notifications and Control Center and then select Status Bar. If you want to see the internet speed on your status bar, then enable this option called Show Connection Speed. You can also customize and change the battery indicator and it even lets you hide the notch as well. If you don't like the notch in the center of your screen, you can hide that by selecting this option. If you like to have a shortcut to launch camera quickly on your device, just go to additional settings, gesture shortcuts and configure the double press volume down key to launch the camera. Now even when my phone is locked, I just need to double press the volume down button and it will open my camera app. Finally, let's talk about some camera features. If you want to capture high resolution 108 megapixel photos from your phone, just select the more tab and click on 108 megapixels. Now you can easily click some amazing high quality photos from your phone. Did you know if you press and hold the shutter button, it starts recording video. If you want, you can also configure it to take burst shots. 
just go to camera settings and configure the press and hold shutter button as per your preference next in the settings if you select customization options you can change the camera modes i will suggest you to set it as more panel so instead of going to the more tab you just need to swipe up to access the more settings if you like recording cinematic videos on your phone just turn on this option called movie frame it will add black bars to your videos which i think looks more professional if you like to record short videos for social media platforms like youtube or instagram just go to more options and select short videos now you get a lot of different filters and it also gives you an option to add background music to your videos this can be super useful if you love creating short videos so that's it for this video these are 25 plus amazing tips tricks and hidden features for your redmi note 11 pro and note 11 pro plus if you have watched the entire video then let me know in the comment section and guys it takes a lot of efforts to make these kind of videos so if you guys liked this video then be sure to hit that like button subscribe to this channel if you haven't already i am mr android and i will see you guys in the next one